I once heard someone say this, Alhamdulillah for Allah. No. Allah Akbar. Right. Allah. There's no other God but Him. Alhamdulillah, I wouldn't want a God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you could fashion, would you be able to fashion Allah. a God better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely not. Alhamdulillah for Al Musawwir, the fashioner, Inshallah. the one who creates all being our God. Sometimes you're like, okay, Allah is there. I believe in Him. But is He really enough for me when everything is taken away? as we see with our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Everything is taken away. At that moment, is Allah enough for you? And was he enough for you before? And 25 years ago, it was a dream for us as new Muslims, right? One, to be able to see the Dawah grow amongst our people as Latinos. Two, and most importantly, that our family begins to accept Islam. And from the favor of Allah that, that I'm, I'm super grateful for, is that this year, alhamdulillah, and I, and I hope is from having some form of istiqamah, that I was able to make umrah with my wife, my son, my daughter, my son-in-law, and more importantly, my mother. Allah, oh, man. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. We are on Juz 24. And the question from yesterday's Juz is which Surah from the previous Juz, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention Ibrahim alayhi salam seeing in a dream that he is to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salam. So go ahead and answer in the chat inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we're joined today by Shaykh Abdullah Adur, of course, as always. And for the first time, alhamdulillah, in Quran 30 for 30, Shaykh Abu Sumayya, uh, Brother Wesley from uh, Mass, Reverts Reconnect in New York, alhamdulillah. How's it going, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, going good, mashallah. Zakullah khair, barakallah fiqh. Pleasure to be here with you guys. Allah yibbala. Allah fiqh, man. I've known, mashallah, Shaykh Abu Sumaya for over, I don't know, I don't even know, man. Let's say 15 years, call it 15 years. Allah yibbala fiqh, alhamdulillah. And it's wonderful to have you and the work that you're doing, mashallah. Just really quickly, you know, how should people who are new to Islam connect with the Qur'an? I'm going to let both of you in 30 seconds, inshallah ta'ala, just... Give your, give your go-to, inshallah ta'ala, to someone who just became Muslim and is having a hard time connecting with the Qur'an. So I always tell them, read the Qur'an in the language that you understand and try to consume of it as much as you can on a daily basis. And Alhamdulillah, if you do that, inshallah ta'ala, every single day, it'll begin to transform your life, especially once you make that first round. All right, so read the translation and, and immerse yourself in it and then it'll start to make its way in. What about you, Shaykh? Yeah, definitely in this month of Ramadan, try to learn the letters you know, and try to learn how to read to where when you do that, you incorporate what you've learned from especially the last three surahs of the Quran, and then just recite it in your prayers as much as you can and call out to him, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, beautiful advice. Zakallah khair. Taib, alhamdulillah. Inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna go ahead and get into Juz 24. And in this Juz, there are two ayat actually I want to go through, and actually one in particular, you know, when we get to Surah Zumar, SubhanAllah, we, we typically find ourselves in a very familiar territory, which is talking about the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it's always this ayah, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Verse 53, say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. But I want to talk about an ayah that comes, you know, almost 20 verses before that. And SubhanAllah, it speaks to the opposite. Uh, but at the same time, it is deeply important to really appreciating the verse that we are always going to get to when we read Surah Zumar, which is, as many of the ulama mentioned, Arja Ayah fi Kitab Allah, the most hopeful verse in the Book of Allah. But the verse I want to talk about, verse 36. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in verse 36 of Surah Zumar, Alayhi Allah bi kafin abda. Isn't Allah enough? for his servant. Now, that part, by the way, SubhanAllah, it, it ties into the words that the people of Gaza have been saying and, and renewing its meaning for us. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for us and he is the best of protectors. But alayhi sallahu bi kafin abda. Isn't Allah enough for his servant? And this is a profound declaration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you have Allah, you really don't need anyone else. And that speaks to the physical, the mental, the emotional, the psychological, that having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms every single part of your existence. Because he is the source of your existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created you. So it's Allah asking a question. 
أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عبد. And that means if anyone seeks to cause you fear or apprehension with other than Allah, then Allah is too great for you to start to fear those things. And if anyone offers you something as a route of happiness or fulfillment or satisfaction that is in contradiction with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, isn't Allah enough for you? Isn't Allah enough for you? Isn't Allah enough for you? Why did you run to sin? Wasn't the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for you? Weren't the avenues that he gave you of happiness in this life and in the next enough for you? So it's a question that keeps on coming up. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدًا And when you sin, you have gone away from your Creator for those moments that you sin. And when you realize how cold it is on the outside, how distant it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how it feels, then you come back to your Lord in tawbah. You come back to your Lord in repentance, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always willing to accept His servant when He turns back to Him, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers a better way. And by Allah Azza wa Jal extending you to a point in which you could taste what it was like to be away from Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you an opportunity to taste the sweetness of being close to Him again. But look at the rest of this ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِي And they try to scare you to cause you fear with those that they have set up as gods besides him. Those powerless gods that they have set up as gods besides him, they try to cause you fear and apprehension by talking about those gods. Now, obviously, you know, when you think about the idols and you think about the idols in Mecca, uh, these people really didn't believe in their own idols, but they would use these superstitions and they would try to cause apprehension and fear to the believers and tell them, if you do this, then this is going to happen to you. But you can also extend this to all the other supports and mechanisms of power that they use today to try to tell the believers, you should be afraid. Allah mentions, that the people have gathered against you. So whether it's the numbers of the people or whether it's the tanks or the artillery that they have, or whether it is indeed the gods that they have set up as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, they try to cause you fear with these powerless gods. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, that person will never be guided. Now here's what I want us to do inshallah ta'ala, and then I'll, I'll pass it on to you, Shaykh Abdullah, yeah. to, to reflect with the night ta'ala on, on your ayat. But when Allah says they threaten you with these powerless gods against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, you know, in the previous juz, we talked about how they blame Allah Azzawajal for what is actually within their power, right? For the things that they don't do right, they blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they try to cause you fear by saying all of these things that we have set up as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will come back to harm you. For the believer, Allah is enough of a supporter. Allah is enough with his power. Allah is enough with his reward. You're neither afraid of pain here, nor are you doubtful of paradise over there. So your desires are never going to dominate you and they're never going to become your God because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough. You don't set up a partner with Allah azza wa jal because he is enough. You don't make dua to anyone else because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough. You don't need to pray to anyone else, supplicate to anyone else. And then subhanAllah again, with that backdrop, verse 53, now read it again by yourself and reflect. Say, oh, my servants who now transgressed against themselves, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. So neither fear anyone but Allah, nor despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to connect to him yeah. and to realize his power and the power of his forgiveness as well as we turn back to him and fear none other but him. Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ameen. Shaykh Abdullah, tafadda. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala amma ba'd. Uh, when speaking about those false gods and people that will kind of give them attributes that are only to the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that there was one that said, Ana al-a'la, that I am your Lord, the most high. This was a statement of Fir'aun, Pharaoh. He's mentioned in the Quran numerous times, particularly in the story of Musa alayhi salam. And what I want to touch on today is something similar and connected to what Shaykh Umar was talking about, particularly when he was speaking about those that attribute Uh, powers to these false gods because in reality they don't have any power nor authority. Neither did Fir'aun, neither did Pharaoh, but he attributed all the power to him, all the honor to him, all the might to him, all the godly characteristics to him. And this is why he is of the worst of creation. And 
Fir'aun mentioned something in the Quran when Musa was sent to him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we sent Musa, Musa We sent Musa with our signs and a clear authority. Allah says, Sultanin Mubin, a clear authority. To Fir'aun, Haman, and Qarun. To these individuals, his financier and his wazir, his manager's right hand man, in other words. Pharaoh had, a, had an army and he had a structure even. But the structure in his belief, in his system, was obviously, as we say, out to lunch, out of space, because he was someone that was calling to himself. And he did not call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although there was the acknowledgement, bef acknowledgement right before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him off of this earth and caused him to drown. But I want to mention one statement of Fir'aun that Sheikh Omar mentioned earlier, and you know, when speaking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a sign by showing what these uh, a'da, these enemies of Islam will say. They will use certain mediums to get a message across that has a similar or a secret message behind it, which shows that they have ulterior motives to call you to their way. And as we know, the word media is literally comes from medium. It is a medium that is used to get a message across. Fir'aun says in the chapter of Ghafir, verse number 26, he says after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the statement of Fir'aun, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِي أَقْتُلْ مُوسَى وَلِيَدْعُوا رَبَّهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ أَوْ أَنْ يُظْلِمَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِي أَقْتُلْ مُوسَى وَلِيَدْعُوا رَبَّهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ أَوْ أَنْ يُظْهِرَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادٍ He says here, one day Pharaoh said, let me go and kill Moses, then let him invoke his Lord. قَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِي Leave me, let me, I'll handle this. So basically Pharaoh is saying, look, I know this tyrant or this, this person that's coming to change our way that we are comfortable with. ذَرُونِي Leave me, let me handle it. أَقْتُلْ مُوسَى وَلِيَدْعُوا رَبَّ I will call Musa, I will kill Musa, Moses, and him, for him to call on his Lord. He's calling on his Lord, he's calling on this Lord that he's calling all of you to. But you notice he says, يَدْعُوا رَبَّهُ Not رَبَّنَا To call on his Lord, to show that this guy, he's the other. He's calling you away from that which you're used to, which you're comfortable with. I will handle it. Let me kill him. إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ And he says here, you know, I fear that he will change your religion. يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ He will replace it with something. Oh, you hit off the aldi facade, or he will cause disruption in the land. Because the fact that he may be someone that will change your religion, it may be something that is good. But let me let me let me cause some reassurance for you that the fact that he's changing your religion may also be, or it is, a disruption in the land. It is something that you don't want. It is something that enough la taqbal that you will not desire. You don't desire this. It's not good for you on this land. So leave it to me. I will handle the situation. I'll kill him. I'll eradicate him. See, you see Fir'aun used different methods to call, to get his message across, to show the people, I'm the one that you are safe with. I'm the one that you can count on. I'm the one that is going to save you from any type of disruption or distraction from that which you are used to. And we see this taking t place today throughout, throughout history, where there will be people that will use media to get a false message across because they have a hidden agenda. And Fir'aun's hidden agenda was to preserve the power. And the power was a polytheistic method. It was a power that he said that he was the Lord. He was the one that was the most high. But we see throughout this surah and numerous surah in the Quran, chapters in the Quran, that Musa alayhi salam persisted that Musa alayhi salam, Allah was enough for him. Allah was enough for him in the beginning, middle and end. And throughout the struggles we see that Musa alayhi salam lived the message of the prophets for he was one of the ulul azm, the prophets of determination and the message of Fir'aun did not even last. And this is a beautiful, beautiful understanding that we get from the Quran that Fir'aun and his message using the media to try to call people away for some ulterior motives that were not in alliance and compliance with the message of Islam, which ultimately calls to the creator of Fir'aun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that call on him in open and in secret. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that say that verily we are from the Muslimin, which I hand the baton to Shaykh, mashallah. Uh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Jazakum wa khair. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنتي إلى يوم الدين ما بعد. To kind of bring it uh, round circle, uh, you know, Sheikh Abdullah was talking about 
those who call to themselves. And the verse that I wanted to focus on today is in Surah Al-Fusilat, verse number 30, where now we have those who are actually calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they say, inna ladhina qalu rabbun Allah, thumma istiqamu, tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaikatu ala takhafu wa la tahzanu, wa abishiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun. Where Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala so beautifully, He tells us in the verse that these individuals, these special believers, MashaAllah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, they say, Rabbun Allah, our Lord is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. But they don't only make that statement on their tongue, but more importantly, they follow that with the action of istiqama, thumma istiqamu, right? They have that steadfastness in this statement of my Lord is Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And because of that, that the angels will descend upon them in three critical moments, some of the Mufassirin say, right? Saying, Do not fear nor grieve, subhanAllah, but glad tidings of paradise which you have been promised, subhanAllah. And they say that those three moments, those three critical moments in that believer's life or in the person's life in general, subhanAllah, will be at the time of death. As we know that every soul is going to taste death. And what we have done in this life and prepared for that moment, subhanAllah, is this right here, right? Saying Allah is our Lord and being steadfast upon that, that the angels at that moment when the person has passed away in that critical moment, subhanAllah, when the angels come to retrieve that body, that soul, that they will say to that person, do not fear, do not grieve. Habibi, you are, you're going to be okay. As Allah says in the following verse, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Right, we were your supporters, in the world and in the hereafter. We are here, we got your back, right, subhanAllah. The second moment they say, when the resurrection happens, that we know that now the day of judgment is about to take place, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that this is the moment when even the child's hair is going to turn white, right, of how critical that state and that stage is, that the angels will be there to say, Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu, right, Habibi, we have your back. We are here to support you, insha'Allah ta'ala. Don't fear and don't grieve. The third, they say, is when crossing across the sirat, subhanAllah, mm -hmm. that we know that it is as thin as a hair, as sharp as a knife. There's hooks dragging people into the fire of hell that some of the scholars have stated that the only light you'll have in that moment is the light of Iman, subhanAllah. And that for some, the light will work. For some, the light will go on and off. For some, mashallah, the light will be bright. And then for others, the angels will be there saying, do not fear and do not grieve. We have your back, right? SubhanAllah. And this just takes us to that point of SubhanAllah, having that istiqamah of knowing that MashaAllah tabaraka wa ta'ala, you have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning what? You've placed Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala first in your life as a priority. MashaAllah, everything in your life revolves around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you understand that when you place Allah first, that when you place Allah in the center, in the core of your life, that you will have everything when you have Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and that you will have nothing when you don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that subhanAllah, that for those individuals that who are suffering and going through trials and going through tribulations, that subhanAllah, that all of these things are eased when you have Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in your life and you say, Rabbun Allah. Right? Or as the Prophet ﷺ advised Sufyan al thaqafi when he says, Qul Rabbi Allah, thumma staqim. Or Qul Amantu Billah, thumma staqim. Right? Say, my Lord is Allah, or say, I believe in Allah, which Allah has already gifted you with, mashallah tabarak wa ta'ala, to make that statement. And then now all you have to do is do your part of remaining firm and making sure that Allah is at the center of your life. And in this Ramadan, in this moment, if you haven't done that up to now, then you still have an opportunity to make Allah your goal, your mission, and the center of your life. Don't lose out that opportunity. Beautiful. So I'm going to summarize in three statements, and y'all let me know if I accurately get it right. Inshallah. So number one, do not be threatened by their powerless gods, and do not despair from your all-powerful God. Number two, alternative gods always have ulterior motives. <laughs> number three, Steadfastness comes out of sincere testimony. Absolutely. Allah, what's Say Allah? Allah is my Lord, and then Allah gives you with steadfastness. If you mean it from the heart, and we're seeing again, subhanAllah, in Gaza right now, that, that istiqama in a way that's absolutely beautiful and absolutely powerful. And of course, every generation has its different fir'auns. Yeah. 
but every generation of believers has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say, Allah be kafir and abda, and Allah is enough for us. Absolutely. It's really interesting, subhanAllah, as well, because a lot of people, with that verse that you're talking about, those verses in full uh you mentioned three impossible situations. No. Three moments, subhanAllah, where when you think about them, I mean, how could I possibly get through that? The soul exiting the body was one. The second one is the soul exiting the grave and coming back on the day of judgment. So first you're leaving the comfortable dunya, then you're rising up in an entirely different plane, the day of resurrection, Yom Al-Qiyamah, and then the time when we find ourselves in front of the Salat, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all. When everyone will be saying, Ya Rabbi Sallam, oh my Lord, make it easy, oh Allah, make it easy for us. So these are three impossible situations. How do you, how does your soul exit the body? How do you come out of the grave alive once again? How are people packed in to where they stand for 50,000 years? How do you cross a bridge that is that thin over the fire with all the elements? But if you have steadfastness, subhanAllah, you're able to make it through. Those are beautiful reflections and uh, I appreciate both of you sharing them. Sheikh Abdullah, what can you do? No, definitely, I really really love that, you know, subhanAllah. I mean, you starting off with the verse, alayhi salallahu alayhi wa abda, is so important because many times in our lives when we look at really, really what we think think and feel in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we're like, okay, Allah is there. I believe in him. But is he really enough for me? When everything is taken away, as we see with our brothers and sisters in Gaza, everything is taken away. At that moment, is Allah enough for you? And was he enough for you before? Because it has to be that iman. That's why we on the Salat al Janazah, Allah Maliladi Tawafaitu Minna, Fatawafahu, Al Iman. O Allah, the one that you have taken away from us, allow him or her to die on Iman. And that's the most important concern that they have that Iman in, in their heart, Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes, and the manifestation of that throughout our lives. So when we really just asking ourselves the question, is Allah really enough for me? Meaning that am I okay when I don't have anything that is from the tangible things and I have this belief in my heart? Because when things are taken away from you that you value, that's when you're really, really tested. Whether it's money, whether it's your child, you know, that's a huge test. Is Allah enough for you? Because you know, as Allah SWT says, just as we have brought the first of creation here, we will bring them back. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. Verily, we are for Allah. Allah owns us ultimately. And to Him we will return. So, you know, subhanAllah. That's why, you know, tying these verses in when you see with Musa alayhi salam and the people that were with him, and then, you know, saying that, but, you know, Allah SWT is enough for me. That saying that, you know, that uh, I'm from the Muslimin and knowing what that may mean as a result, that you may be killed in that in the process. If Allah SWT is enough for you, this dunya is just something that is temporary. And that's something deep to think about and ponder over. No, and, and when I think about that concept, subhanAllah, I want to look at it from the opposite side as well. Mm-hmm. The whole issue is Allah enough for you, not only when I have or when I don't have, but more importantly, even when I have. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if Allah is enough for you, when you are filled with so much bounty, that may mean that sometimes you have to begin to give things up yourself, right? Way too often, um, as a person dealing with new Muslims, mm-hmm. right? Or a person who's dealing with people who are on the edge, wanting to come to the fold of Islam, um, the issue of having to give up, mm-hmm. right? Yep. To now enter yes, faith, sir. like, I want to enter, but I have all of these things that I'm still kind of tied into that I don't know if I want to let it go. Right? And then that's kind of where you have to ask yourself the question, is your Lord enough for you? Mm-hmm. Right? That you're willing to give up these things that are minuscule, that mashallah, you only have them because of Allah wa ta'ala at the Allah. end of the day, right? SubhanAllah, so Allah can take them away overnight and then you have nothing at the same time, right? But are you willing to say Allah is enough for me, inshallah ta'ala, and I'm willing to sacrifice some of those things and again, put Allah at the center of your life, inshallah ta'ala, and then kind of lay the cards where they are, drop the chips where they may, inshallah ta'ala, and see where that takes you in your life. Sure. You know, it's interesting, subhanAllah, about Bani Israel mm. and, and exactly what you just said. When Allah Azza just saved them from their moment and Musa Islam said, Inna ma'i rabbi sayhadeen, Allah is with me. What did they do when they got saved and they saw that miracle? They went and they built a calf again. <laughs> you know, like, you have it now, you're safe. There's no Fir'aun on your tail. No. Allah Azza just saved you. 
And still, you know, where's your, where's your fear? Where's your hope lie? You know, let's go build another golden calf. You know, because we, we get addicted to these things. I mean, we get conditioned, right? They always talk about, you talk about media, mm. media conditioning. Mm. You know, you get conditioned to think a certain way, to believe yeah. a certain way. And so you stop seeing your own interest or their motives. You stop seeing it all. Mm. You get blinded Jamil. altogether by Jamil. it, right? And at the, at the core of this, and inshallah ta'ala, maybe we can, we can share a final reflection on this, but what I'm just thinking of, these moments at the core of this, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want you to succeed, you would not be able to succeed. Period. If Allah Azza wa did not want you to succeed, you would not be able to succeed. You talk about the ulterior motives of the alternative gods. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahu yuridu an yatubu alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. And that's actually the point of Surah Zumar as well. Allah Azza wa wants to forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to find your way back. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, do not die except with husn dhan billah, mm-hmm. having a good assumption of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because otherwise, you're not making this. Yeah. You're not making it. You're, there's no way you're making it through those situations. Yeah, no doubt. There's no way you're detaching yourself from all these other things that you've gotten attached to. You're not making it unless Allah wants you to make it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to make it. And alhamdulillah for that. You know, it's, like, it's like someone, uh, I once heard someone say this, alhamdulillah for Allah. No. Allah Akbar. Right. Allah. There's no other God but Him. Alhamdulillah. I wouldn't want a God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you could fashion, would you be able to fashion Allah. a God better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely not. Alhamdulillah for Al Musawwir, the fashioner, mm-hmm. the one who creates all being our God. So just a final final thought for us, inshallah, from each of you, and then we'll close this off in the No, Alhamdulillah, subhanAllah. It reminds me of a statement of another OG told me, subhanAllah. We believe in Allah, but we believe in Allah, but do we believe Allah? Mm. Right? We believe in Him, but when He says something, when He gives us a promise, do we believe? And we constantly have to ask ourselves that question. And the best way is through the dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live in the hearts. Yeah. You know, for me, man, subhanAllah, uh, when I to just think about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you say Allah is my Lord and you remain steadfast, the blessings and the transformation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do for you. Um, just recently, subhanAllah, I just came back from Umrah, right? Sure, subhanAllah, like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And 25 years ago, it was a dream for us as new Muslims, right? One, to be able to see the Dawah grow amongst our people as Latinos. Mm-hmm. Two, and most importantly, that our family begins to accept Islam. And from the favor of Allah that, that I'm, I'm super grateful for is that this year, alhamdulillah, and I, and I hope it's from having some form of istiqama that I was able to make umrah with my wife, my son, my daughter, my son-in-law, and more importantly, my mother. Allah, oh, man. Subhanallah. <laughs> and for me, that was just like Allah. a dream come true, Allah subhanallah, Allah. that man. I just hope that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, and then to see the effect of that on my mom, being at the Kaaba and just her breaking down and tearing and crying and saying that this was the best moment that she ever had in her life. I can only hope that that, that's from the istiqam that Allah has given us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give your whole family istiqam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of those whom whom you love and Shaykh Abdullah all of those whom you love and all of those Mm -hmm. who we all love. I know there are a lot of people watching that are new Muslims that wait for that moment. Zakallah uh, Sheikh, I think you just gave him a lot of hope, man. May Allah bless you, and I'm happy for you that you had that moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather you as he gathered you in the, in, in the haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather you under his throne on the day of judgment with all of those that you love from every generation and all of us. Barakallah fikum for the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reflections and um, for taking the time out to be with us. Zakallah Khair for having me. Sheikh Abdul Razak. Allah. May Allah just bless you. Shabbat as always. Inshallah, we'll see you all for just 25. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.